All right, hey everybody, let's get it going here. Uh, we got a <clears throat> really exciting project today to work on. We're gonna be creating our own tile patterns and then modeling their growth rates uh, using a linear function. So it's cool kind of a connection and application to linear functions. Let's get into it, here we go. So we're the first thing, the first direction is to insert images of your tile pattern. Well, we haven't created the tile pattern and uh, we have no images yet, so let's do that first. So you can open up the tile pattern creator right here. This is a Google sheet uh, that you can use. All right, so let's see here. What are we gonna do? First thing, we wanna make squares that we can deal with, right? And you can see right now, uh, looks like we're dealing with uh, rectangles. Oh, we got somebody else in the sheet, that's fine. My other identity. <clears throat> so let's uh, go ahead and hit Command or Control A to select all. Or you can go up here to edit. Uh, maybe you can't actually select all. Interesting. Does that not work here? Let's see if we go to edit. Hmm. Okay, never mind. Apparently we can't select all. So you just do Command or Control A and select all of them. Now from here, you can drag this over and it will change the size of all of the columns there. Now we want it to be a nice <clears throat> square that looks about right right there okay so here we go now let's go ahead and let's create our tile pattern uh the first thing i'm going to do is actually do command or control a again and select all of the squares and i'm going to change the fill color on them what color should we go i like green so i'm going to go with a nice uh light green here okay now let's start drawing our tile pattern. So let's see, let's make here a figure one. Let's see, you know, how do I want this to look? Um, <laughs> okay, let's say figure one looks like this and uh, I'm gonna ch start changing the fill color here. Maybe we'll do a nice yellow like that. And we'll uh, do a yellow, okay. And then we'll go up here on our diagonal and make it yellow and make it uh, yellow again. Okay, now I'm gonna come down here and I'm going to label this one right here, figure one, okay? And uh, okay, now let's make figure two here. So again, we'll come over here and this isn't doesn't have to be too precise, but let's see, there we go. And then we'll change the fill color and then we'll come here and we'll change the fill color again and then we'll do this one, right? Is this right? Yeah, that looks good. Uh, it seems like it's increasing at the proper rate. Now, if you wanna save some time, you can try Control or Command Y, which redoes the last thing you did. So basically the last operation that I had the computer do was to change the fill color. Uh, so if I just hit Command Y, it will change the fill color for me. Okay, figure three. All right, let's keep it going. Let's maybe speed up a little bit here. Uh, change that fill color. There we go. Now we'll go this way and we'll change the fill color. There we go. Now we'll do that here. We'll use our command Y, command Y. Now I need three of these coming off at the diagonal here. Okay, let's do one more and then we'll call it a day. Oh, let's see here. One, two, three, four, five, six six we need now and then we need six going down this way as well is that too many there that looks better right or did I do too few now did I mess up my last one actually I think I might have messed up the last one yeah I messed it up and I see that now okay so let me change this one back to green now this one is correct and we're growing at the appropriate rate here <clears throat> okay Let's, oh, well, that's not what I wanted to happen. Okay, let's see here. Let's change this back to yellow. Okay, now let's add some more in here. Okay, and then looks like we might need one more. All right, and there we go. Now let's go ahead and label these. This one would be figure, oh, figure th four. And uh, down here, figure five okay so there we go we got figure one figure two figure three oh 
Wow, okay. We're struggling a little this morning. Okay, this is figure two, not figure three. That would make this one uh, figure three, not figure four. And this one, of course, would be figure four, not figure five. Okay, there we go. So now let's see. Let's check through for any mistakes. It would appear that uh, it's, it's an early morning. We're making some mistakes. So here we go. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, and then one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five. Five, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, good, good, good. It all looks good. Now, one thing that's throwing me off a little bit, I think, is that uh, these uh, the square is a little bit wider than it is tall. So let me see if I can adjust that just a little bit here. Might not be able to do so so easily. Okay, that looks like it's helping, but I didn't quite go quite far enough. Let's drag it in just a little bit more. All right, there. Now that's starting to look really good where it's like almost even uh, horizontally and vertically. Uh, so there we go. Okay, so we've got a nice tile pattern drawn now. Uh, so let's go ahead and go over. Actually, first things first, I suppose we should probably take some images and screenshots of this. And we've got two slides so we can do that. All right, so let's see here. I'm going to take a screenshot now. You're going to have to figure out how to screenshot on your computer. On my MacBook, it's Command Shift 4, and then you can drag a box. On Windows, you might want to go down here to the lower left, find the Start menu, and look for the Snipping tool. Most people can figure out how to have been able to figure out how to take a screenshot and uh, insert that. So let's see. I'm going to take mine here, and then I'll take another one here. Okay, we took two screenshots. All right, so now let's come and let's insert them here. Let's go to insert image. And I'm going to have to upload from the computer. Again, there's a lot of ways to do this, including with your smartphone. And I think we've practiced this a little bit. Uh, so let's see here. Where will this go? This will go to the uh, desktop. And then, oh, boy, probably should have cleaned this up. But luckily, I can see it right here. Okay, so let's insert that image in. And uh, then let's come here and let's insert the next one. All right, so image, upload the compute, uh, upload from computer, and we'll put in our second screenshot right there. Okay, so we've got this here. Now we can start filling in our table. We actually have a table over here that we can fill in. Well, let's see, figure number zero, one. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And uh, let's start filling it in by counting up those squares. So again, this was the second tab on the tile pattern creator. So if you go down to the bottom here, you can switch back and forth between those two. Okay, so let's see here. Figure one, that one looks like it was one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, so this one contains seven. And then that would mean that figure two contained one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, and now I'm starting to see a pattern here. It looks like it's increasing by three each time. But let me double check. Let me count one more here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Okay, so now we're really seeing that pattern emerge. 13, uh, 16, 19, 22, 25, 28, and 31, and so on. Now, how many would zero have? I could draw out the zero. Let's see. If I look at this, is it figure zero, so that would be in taking away this one and this one and this one, so I'd be left with one, two, three, four, I believe, which also fits the pattern, right? If we subtract three instead of adding three, we would get four. So there we go. We've got a pretty complete looking table right now. Okay, so here's what I'm going to do. First things first, I'm actually going to come here and I'm just going to copy this table right here. So I'm going to do a Command C or Control C to copy the table. And then I can come over here and I can paste that table in uh, just by doing a command or control V. 
and if that doesn't work for you okay good it did work but the font size is really small so let me increase it so we can all see it okay nice all right oh yeah there we go now we can really see it uh, now if that doesn't work you can just type in every single one and it will take a minute but you know that's fine uh, okay there we go uh, so we've got our pattern number and our number of squares table filled in okay now the tile pattern graph okay so here we go we got to make ourselves a graph so we've got this table that we're going to use to create the graph and actually I believe this should be fairly easy when I was looking at it earlier somehow the presets were like really really good on this so if you just highlight your data so if you just start there on figure number and drag and highlight the whole thing here and then you click on insert and we insert uh, the image right here. no we insert a chart right here and uh, let's see what happens is it gonna work for us or no oh there it is okay it took a second to pop up but you can see all of this it gives us a title so we don't even need to add a title number of squares versus figure number that's pretty good uh, and then you can see the figure number has ended up on the x-axis which is great the number of squares has ended up on the y-axis which is great now if you need to add any of those you can come here to customize and then find that chart and axis titles and you can go ahead and uh, you can go ahead and go through and edit anything that you might need to do there okay Mm, let's see okay so I think everything's looking good uh, if you need to go to setup the other thing we can do is we can change this to a scatter chart right here or we can leave it as a line chart I think I'll leave mine as a line chart um, <clears throat> but everything uh, seems to be pretty well set up now the key to kind of having this chart pre-made for you is to make sure to highlight the data accurately before you uh, click on right here insert chart right so make sure this data is highlighted then click insert chart and it should pop up pretty nicely for you and if it doesn't I'll help you out okay so let's see let's copy this chart let's do command C or we can go over here and then we can just go ahead and do a command or control V and we can paste it now you can choose linked or unlinked I think I'm gonna do unlinked right here let's paste it in there okay nice we've got ourselves a graph and uh, last things last is to answer these questions okay so we're going to answer what is the growth rate of your tile pattern right so that is the change that occurs each time in this case three what is the slope of your graph okay interesting question now we can maybe use our uh, newfound slope knowledge to kind of figure out like okay what is the change in y and the change in x of course being very careful to notice that um, the x-axis numbers are different from the y-axis numbers right so we've got to be careful about that we can't just purely count the squares we have to sort of uh, we have to use this axis the change in y here we have to do it that way another thing we could look at is like we could pull two points from here and use our formula to figure it out that way all right so the slope what is the quantity of squares and pattern zero that should be pretty easy to figure out what is the y-intercept of your graph that one should be pretty easy to figure out all right now here is the real hard fun the real hard question right here hopefully we can make it a little bit easier because we're used to doing it with a graph right so all you have to do is figure out right like okay we we know it's gonna look like this f of x equals mx plus b right and we just have to figure out what that slope is and what that y-intercept is and hopefully at this point we've figured out we can like we we can figure out what those two numbers are and we can put them in there then we're going to use that formula right here to kind of figure out how many squares would the 125th tile pattern contain so let's say we have this f of x equals uh, 3x plus 4 let's just say that was our tile pattern equation right here we're just going to substitute in 125 
and uh, then we can multiply that times three. That would be, uh, let's see, f of x equals, uh, let's see, 375. The neighbor's jamming now. Maybe you could hear that. Plus 4. And uh, that would equal f of x equals 379. All right, and there we go. That's how we would answer that one. And uh, we could also figure out what the thousandth tile pattern would contain. Okay, so you got a lot of work here. It was kind of a long video, uh, so I think I'll end it there. Hopefully that's enough for everyone to figure it out. Good luck and have fun.